back in November of 2022, I brought the Fuji X100V along with me on one of the most incredible backpacking trips I've ever done. I did a seven night and eight day solo trek through Torres del Pine National Park and the route is called the O Circuit. For me, it's really important to be light and quick and be able to cover a lot of distances each day on foot. This is quite a big hike. Some of the days were upwards of 20 kilometers. So I didn't want to bring my big heavy camera and lenses. I wanted to bring something small and the Fuji X100V for me was the perfect camera for this hike. So let's start in Porto Natales, which is the most common starting point for this hike. I spent a couple days here before I embarked on the trek and just walking around town and some incredible buildings here. The light was really nice and I love the color of the siding and, and the roof and the windows. So this is kind of just a fun shot I took while preparing gear for the hike. The next day, day one, um, basically started the hike. You hike from Central, which is where most people start, to Camp Saron. It's 13 kilometers. It was a lot of farm fields and I honestly wasn't really inspired that much. I did shoot, but didn't select any images. But on day two, hiking from Camp Saron to Camp Dixon, this is an 18 kilometer hike. We really got into more of the beautiful landscapes and this first image here was, was on that trail. So we just hiked up a little bit of a hill and there's these super cool red shrubs or little red flowers right along the trail and you started seeing the alpine in the background open up, giving an idea of really what you're in for this day. And this is also where the boundary of the park officially starts. So up till this point, I think local farmers own the land but from here on out, um, it's all permitted and all the rules and regulations apply from this point in. Met a couple friends at the camp the night before from the Netherlands and I saw them hiking down this trail here, kind of overlooking this whole valley with the lake and the river in the background and just took the camera out, snapped that shot. Really, really like it. I think it provides a sense of scale to the landscape. After hiking for quite a bit longer, Camp Dixon first revealed itself. This is probably one of my favorite camps of the entire hike, because look at it. The location is just phenomenal. It's nestled right in the mountains, right on this lake, mouth of the river. It had this peninsula kind of coming out, which I took a shot from, I'll show you in a second here. But just seeing the camp and the little bit little buildings here, compositionally, I, I felt was really, really nice. The lighting wasn't incredible because I was getting in kind of later in the day, but those mountains you actually see in the background there is um, one of the glaciers, and I think that's actually where Argentina is. So you're pretty close to the border there, which is which is kind of neat. This is that shot I just mentioned that I took on this little, you know, rocky beach peninsula. Never seen this bird before. I'm from Canada, so seeing this type of wildlife was just so cool. The colors on its body and its wings were were just incredible and it, I snapped this just as it was flying off. It hung out with me for a little bit there and I was just laying out and relaxing after a long day of hiking. So I think compositionally just having that centered was a um, shot I was really happy to get. Yeah, I went back to camp, ate some dinner and then the lights started popping that night. A couple friends I made were also photographers. So we just kind of roamed around and as we were roaming, I looked back and the Torres were just kind of lit up by this incredible purple and, and blue just as we were getting into blue hour. And we walked down to, to the lake towards the glacier and such a mood as you walk down to the shore, just the, the shrubs and the flora and fauna there is so different and the snow-capped mountains in the background with a bit of a hint of the glacier. I really like this shot. I'm, I'm a big fan of shooting at blue hour. So same with this one, just a silhouette of the of the tree. Sometimes you don't need to go looking, you know, for and searching for the shot. Sometimes there's something right there if you're just willing to get a little bit creative What's with what's kind of you know, right in front of you there. And the silhouette of the tree and the mountain there, compositionally and lighting wise, I'm, I'm a big fan of. Probably one of my favorite shots I took on the hike, actually. And then just as we were about to, to crawl into camp, saw all the tents on the lawn there with just some lights as people were reading and getting ready for bed. And then just a silhouette of the last light of the day over the mountains I thought was pretty cool. Next day, we woke up this hike from Dixon to Los Perros, which was about um, 12 kilometers, just got a sign just to really situate where we were going and the long shadow and the morning light was was super cool. I was one of the first people up this day just to capture that really nice morning light and just saw the mountains and this incredibly lush and green vegetation. A bit of an idea of what the trail looked like just as we were hiking through there. It started getting a little bit more lush, just so many trees and greenery just on the mountainside there and revealing some 
more of the Torres kind of in the background there. Also hiked along a bunch of rivers and little canyons and stuff like that. So lots of access to drinking water. Um, it is known in Patagonia that you don't have to filter any of your water. So that's pretty cool. We just dunked our bottles right in here. Uh, I think I even put my head in just because it was sunny and, and warm this day. So that's a special part of it. Yeah, we just had these incredible mountain mountain views as we were just hiking in that night. And after setting up camp, did a couple laps back and forth and saw some remnants of a fortunately really devastating forest fire and the starkness of kind of these barren trees with the also the barren rock and peaks in the background at Blue Hour just struck me as very evocative and kind of, you know, emotional and cold kind of image. I really like that one. The next morning was one of the biggest hikes in terms of elevation. So we got a very early start, way before sunrise. This is on the climb up, just a very, very little hint of light just kind of peeking on these peaks. And as the sun kept rising, the clouds and and those peaks kind of we're in, in front of them now looking back just some incredible light that morning as we got to the top of the pass it was so cold that I didn't even really take out my camera I was quite underdressed and I just wanted to get down and back into shelter because the Patagonian winds can just be insanely brutal learned that the hard way that morning as you overlook that pass and look at the glacier this is some of the views you see as you get closer to it um, these incredibly massive icebergs these look so small and dotted in these photos, but the scale of them in real life is just just phenomenal. Um, so seeing those icebergs just floating away was was super, super cool. Along with this lake kind of dotted with, with little islands and once again, more really colorful flowers. It was spring there during this trip, so that was really cool to see. And when we got to Pane Grande at camp that night, I went for a trail run and saw these incredible mountains here. It was very, iconic Patagonian landscape to me. So I went back again that night at sunset and captured a few of these images. Really quite happy with this one, the leading lines of the path and the overgrown shrubs leading into those peaks behind it. It was a really special place. And I even got a little artsy because you have the 35 millimeter F2 lens on this camera. So you can do some fun stuff with it. Next day, we hiked from Pane Grande to Los Cuernos, which is one of the most relaxed and shortest hiking days. It was about 10 kilometers, if I recall correctly. And we stumbled upon this beach, really cool color in the water and um, the dotted rocks, like salt and pepper rocks. I was loving it. So I actually just got a bit more of a textural shot here, just with the gradient going into the water. Really love that spot. Really close to camp, looked up to my left of the trail. And this is the kind of landscape that's all around you in Patagonia. Just waterfalls coming out of nowhere down the mountainside, clouds rolling through the upper peaks, you know, bits of hints of snow here and there. Just Patagonia in a nutshell in this image, I think. Just an incredibly beautiful place. And then looking to the other side, still just overlooking this incredibly blue turquoise glacial lake, getting a bit more views as we hiked up further and, and you know, seeing all the mountains that lie around this area. Trying to stop and take in the... the the macro as well as the micro, you know, little details like the flowers there, I think is always fun. And then just before settling in at camp this night, just a nice silhouette of these towers. And this kind of reminded me of some of the mountains and the Dolomites in, in Italy. I think we have a bit of the moon or the a couple of stars there. Next morning, we hiked from Los Cuernos to Central, which is where we started this hike. And some of these islands uh, were so prehistoric. You know, it remind me of like Jurassic Park or dinosaur era. Very reminiscent of the islands in, in Indonesia around the Komodo Islands, just rising out of the water. And the colors here with the little bit of green moss on it and then the blue sky and blue water I thought was really cool and it was it was fun uh, compositionally taking a few of those and then just as I was about to roll in a central these awesome horses just just came out to greet me and say hey that was pretty fun they got right close to me and were walking with me a bit on the trail there and then we were just settling in uh, for the night after a really big rainstorm we kind of celebrated with a couple friends and uh, had some really good food and drinks in the refugio that night. And just as we were walking back to camp, the skies completely cleared, revealing this incredible sunset. And I had to go run back to my tent. Kirby here, my friend, is brushing his teeth. But I really wanted to shoot the scene because the sky was just popping. And we had these beautiful silhouettes of, you know, vegetation and these you know, snow-capped peaks in the mountains in the background. You know, lots of textures between just the clouds and the mood and the feeling of all this was just really visceral. And I was, I was happy to capture this night because it was one of the most beautiful 
uh, photographic opportunities, I think, of the whole trip. Next morning, woke up for the biggest hike of the entire trip. It was just an out and back because the way our permits and campsites worked, we couldn't get a spot close to the Torres. So this is me just with my view uh, as I unzipped the tent the following morning and we began our hike I think like 4 or 5 a.m. and this is the light a recent uh, snowfall the night before was just dusting the the peaks of those mountains in the background and the warm golden light on the foothills ahead really happy with this photograph and that was the trail we ended up hiking to which about 12 kilometers and a couple hours later revealed uh, base Torres or Mirador Torres which is the lookout it's probably the view that you might recognize and it's the most iconic and popular place in Torres del Pine National Park it was cold and windy and just absolutely beautiful up here and to see this view in person finally for the first time after seeing so many photos of it was really 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 special all in all I'm really happy with uh, with that series and I hope to do more of this type of thing, sort of trip recaps in the form of like a photo essay. And I appreciate all of you watching this video. Please subscribe to stay tuned in the future for more of these types of videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.